a clip going on. <clears throat> Hello and welcome to this week's virtual studio party, a gathering of creatives, makers, artists, and the people who love them. And uh, I'm here with Cal Honey, who hello, will, hello. hi Cal, who will, as usual, be monitoring the chat and conveying it to me, and we'll be chatting back and forth too. So um, uh, I look forward to seeing what happens today. So as usual, um, uh, at least for most of the. Uh, studio virtual studio parties i'm going to be working in a uh, one or more of my altered books and um uh, i still haven't done anything to the cover of this one but the book is much altered as you can see here so i'll do a flip through once we have more people on board meanwhile welcome to everyone who's joining us now nice to see you and um <clears throat> After um, I do the flip through, I will um, work work on some more pages. I have some spreads in progress that I can work into, and I've got another book, actually. Oh, no, here it is. I've got it here um, that I need to add to. So uh, please say hi in the chat if you're able. Uh, to be able to chat, uh, you need to be signed in to your Gmail account or your YouTube account. YouTube and Gmail can be linked, and that allows you to actually add comments to the chat. So if you were wondering, and um, uh, some people have managed to do that. And it's joined us, says, hi, it's so hot in the garden now, she says. Oh, you're out in the garden. That's <laughs> nice. And uh, yeah, we're inside with the air con on, so we're not feeling the heat right now. Stella from LA says oh, hi. Oh, hi, Stella. And Mia is back. Hey, Mia. <laughs> How are you feeling, Mia? Are you feeling a little better now? I hope you're feeling yeah. better. That would be really good. Um, thanks for joining us, guys. It's nice to see you again. Um, now, let's see. I'm going to move this out of the way somehow over there. Kay is joining us as well. Hi, Kay. She's going to work on creating more masks and stencils from magazines. Fantastic. Yes. So that's, that from that's something Friday? we were doing in, um, in Jelly Jam 2. Uh, we had our second last class of this session yeah, uh, Thursday. And um, I, I love that, uh, that subject of, of found, creating found stencils and so on. So excited to know you're going to be doing it. It's just such a great opportunity. So let's see, we've got nine. I'll wait just a little bit longer before I do my flip through, just because uh, we'll probably get at least a couple more people. Um, yeah, so I've got, I've got three books on the go, which is kind of funny. And so absolutely in alignment with my personality, <laughs> I'm a little ADD, um, but each of the books, uh, serves a different purpose for me. So that's fine. Um, yes. And in this one, I demonstrated making a repair to my class yesterday. And so it's got a repair in it, uh, which I didn't necessarily do perfectly. I thought of something right after doing the demonstration, but you know, that's, that's the way things go. You know, it's like thinking up the, Oh, I know the perfect thing I should have said. <clears throat> All right. Well, I think since it's four minutes after, I'm just going to go into the flip through because I think that's a nice way to start off. So some of these spreads, of course, you'll have seen over the course of many virtual studio parties, but I think it's nice to get a holistic sense. So I definitely started off with a, a 
a, a particular distinct personality. Now this is new. This page I had done, but this page I had not done. And what I've done in response to the activity level on this page is a very minimalist but related thing, which is, um, you can see I've used yeah, a transparent yeah, a transparent medium. You can see it's shiny, whereas the gesso around it is very, very matte. And also you can see how transparent the, the, it is through the, through the medium by comparison. And um, I decided to do that simple X because it's a great lead into this spread. So really, mm -hmm. I just needed to contemplate that for a little while before I realized that that's the obvious thing for me to do. And this is the point at which I started gluing my pages together. I should have started earlier. Um, and this is a collaged on piece from another book onto this black ground. And this is an activated ground. And then this one is the negative of the previous collaged on piece collaged onto the red part is the existing page. Okay. And this is the added on part. Of what you expect. Yeah, it because it, the red advances, you sort of feel like it must be the red part that's collage, but that's not the case here. And I'll just go Did close you paint up. The red after you had collaged or before? I had painted the red onto the whole page right. first. Yeah. yeah. And then, of course, this low contrast activation on the facing page, breaking up the text, which is nice. Now I made some progress on this spread. I had done this before, but I've got a first layer on this. I decided to, to do a simple shape um, that's kind of hearkening back to the very first spread I showed you. So it's not the same, but it I think I think subconsciously yeah. will make a connection. Um, and it's against the complexity and texture of this one. Um, but I, I'm thinking of adding another layer to this, so um, stay tuned. Now this one also, it's not 100% obvious what's going on. This circle has been collaged on. This circle was the mask I put over the, the text part of the book page and then painted around it and then remove the mask. Right, right. So this is a reveal, not a collage. And I'll just go really close up just in case it becomes more evident close up yeah, it's that it's better. not collaged on, yeah. right? Because that is an important difference. And then just a kind of echo and response. It's, it's kind of related to the red spread previous and then to the one we just looked at. Yeah, more cool, but more varied color, right? Yeah, yeah. and so it's, uh, it's all painted on. There's no collage involved. And then I started to get intricate. You may remember this from the previous. Yeah, crazy again. With the metallics. So you can see the sheen when I move the book around. And with all those intricate details. Dots within dots. Red dots, low contrast on the red violet metallic ink. And now we get into some stuff. This I was working on last week and I've finished it. So I put a silver ground down on the whole spread and uh, memories of Spirograph, uh, only less complicated. Um, I did these interlocking shapes and uh, it also is evocative. Uh, Nicole Collins uh, pointed this out on Instagram that I was channeling uh, Hilma Clint. Is that her name? The Guggenheim just had a big, sh big seminal show. And it turns out she was doing pure abstraction before Casimir Malevich. Oh, love it. And it's just like, yeah, because of art history and it's yeah. unfortunate lack of representation so, um, going back a couple of spreads i have a question from Mia. okay yeah the um the reveal um the any, text any, yeah and, yeah uh, yeah she said are the real page and the background page glued together i don't think she's understanding that it's one and the same 
Oh, yeah. So this, this whole page was a normal text page and you're just seeing part of it. This is just paint. So it's on the same page as this, but covering up the rest of what's around that. So this is not, um, uh, the green paint is not on a separate page with an opening in it. It's that it's, um, before I put the green paint on, I actually had this circle taped in place to mask off my painting, then ripped off the mask. And then later thought I should collage the mask on here. It just somehow seemed the right thing. Yeah. Um, Kay says there's a fabulous documentary about Hilma of Clint. Oh, that sounds great. And where did you see that, Kay? Love to know. I, I'd love to watch that documentary. Okay, I've got a, a completely un... It, these are glued together pages, so they're thick and ready to go, but I haven't done this spread yet. Um, I am thinking of doing repeating the silver ground, but doing something different. And then, um, let's see what's next. Oh, yeah, so this one needs... Uh, this, uh, the silver ground, this, this page is silver, um, <clears throat> but it's not very well covered because I'm using, I used uh, some old silver acrylic paint and it's, uh, well, let's just say it doesn't apply the best. So it needs at least another coat. And then this was a demo during the altered books class to show a, a way of developing the surface. I don't know if you can tell that there's texture to this. Um, the striations are actually raised um, and uh, you're seeing through to a color below and to some of the white paper. So that's not finished. So I have to think about that. Okay, so this, this is not done either. But moving along, I did some blackout poetry and I will read that blackout poetry to you. This is stream of consciousness writing here, which I've done very, very densely so that it's hard to read. It's not impossible to read, but it is hard to read. Um, I'll come back to the blackout poetry and read it. Uh, so these are some new spread. This is a new spread using jelly pad printing, mono printing, and some uh, drawing. That's also a form of mono printing, but more direct. Some more mono prints. Um, so, you know, I haven't figured out what I'm doing with those as my base, but I think they give me something rich to work with. And I got a, just a little bit of a start mono printing that page improvisationally. So this I want to I want to save for last because this one feels like the most important new spread that I've done. Uh, that's definitely important to me in light of all the protests and the anti-racism rallies and and so on and um, and that's this. Is it showing mm -hmm. up well? Okay. It is I'll hold it there like that, and then I'll go close in in a minute, moment. I'll just change hands for that. Oh, that's great. And I'll just move it slowly so you can see. So that's uh, mono printing as well. Different, many, many layers of mono printing. Okay, says uh, of the Hilda of Clint, uh, Hot Docs Theater. I think it was a festival last year, but they show it periodically. I think it played recently online at the Paradise as well. So it may help well still be around. Mm. And Mia says, amazing flip through. So creative in the last one, powerful. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. That's lovely. Okay, I think 
I'm going to actually, I have something I need to do in this book. Um, this book has a box window in it. I don't know if I showed this last week or not. You see it has depth. Um, and a, a, one of my um, digital mixed media images peeking through. Uh, but yes, there, so this is a window I've done with, again, a, a photo digital mixed media image. And um, <clears throat> so I want to put a layer of something on this inside because it's not really finished. Um, I like the switch from cool to hot, but um, I'm going to layer some one or two more glazes on it. Something get... great about both the, the red and, and blue and then the green of the book. Yeah, the green of the book is so good with this. Yeah. With this, uh, does that cover, right? Yeah. And it works well with this, too. So, yeah. So, I'm just going to use a big elastic band to keep <laughs> the rest of the book under control while I do this. And I need a page protector. You have something in mind? Not yeah, I'm just going to glaze another color. I'm going to build up the color depth and um, complexity. Evenly and or unevenly or unsure? Um, evenly at this point. I'll back this up so you can see my table. And can't really see me. See me, see my mouth, but not me. Okay, that's good. And now if you could tilt the screen back a little bit. There. That's good. And don't, you know, I will hold it up so that you can see properly sometimes. Alrighty. So I just have to think about what. Lillian from Winnipeg has joined. Hi, Lillian. Thanks for coming. So is anybody here working on anything or playing with something, experimenting with something, or are you just chillaxing? Kay said she was going to be doing masks and stencils right. for the magazine. Right, yep. What, I think uh, she's the only person who said anything, right? Right, right. Yeah. And uh, Kay, are you going to be using, um, what kind of magazine are you using and what kind of things are you looking for in it? Well, she's looking for shape. Yes. I don't know if she's looking for specific, any specific qualities, but uh, source material is very interesting. You know, like the um, there are magazines on so many different subjects. Like you think about uh, a Canadian Geographic magazine versus a home decor magazine or a, I don't know, uh, a car enthusiast magazine or a cycling enthusiast magazine. Um, even that versus a mountain climbers magazine. They're both outdoors, but they're quite different in terms of the photography you get and therefore the shapes. Lillian says, I did one of those windows so I could insert an old key. The challenge I had was that the book no longer wanted to sit well. It sort of slanted to the side. Yeah, it will slant. Um, yeah, it will slant. Uh, the, I think the only time I've seen it not slant is when people were more aggressive about removing pages. But even then, it becomes an irregular thing because you are modifying it structurally, um, the stresses. So a book is designed to have uh, identical kinds of pages inside, evenly distributed, bound in a certain way. And so as soon as you start gluing things up, adding stuff in, it, it starts putting different, just physics, right? Yeah. Puts different forces at work on the binding. 
and that causes it to go off. It's, but don't worry about it. It's built so all the pages will slide against each other to sort of read. And be and very play, tight. But as soon, as soon as you glue like 40 of them together, it's... Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Uh, Kay says, ha ha, interesting shapes. I have a couple of people with angles and I found a great mm. martini glass. I have some oh. Zoomer, Zoomer magazines and travel magazines. Oh, there. good. Yeah. That's a nice mix. Oh, vicarious travel. <laughs> yeah, I know. I love watching YouTube videos on travel. Just looking for my barrier cream, the black lid. Right there. Oh, thank you. <laughs> right in front of me. Um, oh, I just love watching those. You know, psychologically, I think it's really helpful because I have been, you know, in our house or in our yard except for um, a handful of walks beyond because Cal, bless him, to protect me, has been doing the limited amount of shopping and errands. We're very limited because we have tried to order a lot. And so, um, yeah, psychologically, I just find it really helpful to look at outdoor videos, travel videos, all of that. Got to save up some money to do a do some traveling. Once once this uh, virus is well and truly behind us. Now get a suitable brush. Annie says for once, I have finished my homework, so I can try to get some inspiration for next week's classes, LOL. <laughs> Way to go, funny. Annie. <laughs> and Philippa says, hi, Kim and Cal, I found you. Hi, Philippa. I'm glad you found me. Yeah, so, because uh, I know you're a veteran of attending these things, if you go to my channel and you don't see the live, the live video, just keep uh, doing the refresh in your browser. Uh, until it until it appears it's often indicated by a sort of a circular arrow yeah something will indicate and you just it. reload the page repeatedly until until the live now shows up yeah but anyway you found us and i'm delighted so i'm going to make a glaze good. okay sorry thanks. okay good <laughs> I'm going to make a glaze because I want uh, transparency in this color. Now, as it happens, this cadmium orange hue in the Liquitex Basics has transparency. Transparent already, right? But it's not trans quite transparent enough to... Um, for what you're envisioning? Yeah, for a glaze effect. It, it could end up looking blotchy. Whereas when I do this... Actually, why am I opening that part? I can just do this part. It's because I'm talking... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I had a, a big meeting to attend on Zoom uh, this morning, so uh, my brain's already well well used up. I'm a member of the Redhead Gallery at 401 Richmond Street in Toronto, a, a, a major creative arts hub in downtown Toronto. And because of COVID, the gallery has, of course, been closed. And so, you know, we've been, that raises a lot of issues, let's put it that way. And also creates opportunities for some new and different projects. So, um, be very interesting you know just like cal and i've taken on new and different projects like this virtual studio party because of the covid situation so we've been in the lucky group of you know definitely ha seeing some some silver linings in the clouds of the situation and of course our years just got everyone's years just got more uh I don't know, challenging, but in an important, for important reasons with all of the anti-racism 
stuff going on, not before time. It's like, how many times do we have to go through this? So let's make this the one that actually leads to change maybe. Um, but anyway, um, that's, I'm not gonna have the news intrude on our lovely safe space. So thinking about what Cal asked me about, you know, is it gonna be an even coat? I decided, no, I won't make it an even coat. I'm gonna make it a texture. So I've got a very fat, or rather fat, pointed brush, tapered brush that I'm gonna to use to make a succession of paint marks that over, I don't know, slightly overlap. Is that the one you had to save up for an order from, uh, from halfway around the world? <laughs> <laughs> Cal's teasing me about my uh, expensive materials and tools taste. Now I do have some things that cost more money, but I um, teaching got me to try these out and I discovered, you know what? They work for a lot of things. That says Crayola. <laughs> And uh, not all of the Crayola brushes are ones I would recommend, but these are the white synthetic bristle brushes. Um, I got, I buy sets of the flat ones like this. And um, comes in four or five sizes and of the tapered ones, round tapered ones. And um, honestly, they're fantastic multi-purpose brushes. I have um, also, you know, some art paint brushes because I started out as a painter. So I definitely, nothing by a Skoda. I I've never had that budget for my brushes, but um, anyway, very often when I teach my in-person classes, I have a box of brushes available for students to borrow just to make sure, because people don't always have a, a great variety of size and shape. And so this makes sure that they have some variety to choose from. And, and then I went, hey, not bad. Have to get the paint load right on this. There we go. Mia says, did you print your name on your brush? <laughs> you did. In the same silver color as Crayola? You did. <laughs> <laughs> I did, actually. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and I use the silver color just because it, it shows up well, you know, on, on various colors. I, I, I try to put them, especially when I'm going to Halliburton, where it's very intense and there are lots of people. And um, I try to make sure I put it on all of the tools that it's practical to put them on. Marie Payne says, hi, just hanging hi, out today. Hi, Marie. Well, that's <laughs> nice. Mia says, it looks like it belongs there. <laughs> and it says, eagle eyes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, seriously, eagle eyes. That's great. Jeez, I'm going to have to mix up some more. I think I didn't mix up enough glaze. Oh, well, no biggie. You semi-glossed over how much you needed. <laughs> Cal's had his exercise today, so expect the puns. Just keeping us lively, keeping our brains active. Right, dear? Something like that. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. oh. there. That's better. That was an uneven load there. Yes, yeah, so this love right. the color combinations. Transitions to the other page perfectly. Thank that, you. That is actually. You got a uh, sprite now? Oh, it's the. That's uh, the elastic <laughs> band. <laughs> That's right, but yeah. it looks very orange on the yeah. video. Even more orange. There is some red orange in yeah. the um, illustration, even though it's. Lillian the... asks again. Can you tell? Or sorry, <laughs> Lillian asks, asks. Can you tell us again how you made your mixture? Yes, I can. Just one moment. I'm just going to get this one mark in place 
um, mindfully, and then I will do that. So on my little palette here, I um, used my basics paint, uh, and I happen to know that this color already has some transparency to it, not intentionally necessarily, just it does. And, um, and then I used Triart's semi-gloss, the SG stands for semi-gloss, uh, polymer medium, so it's a basic polymer medium which means it's fluid, that's why it's in a bottle. Um, and um, I put about 50-50 paint and medium. And it will also clarify somewhat as it... Yeah, as it dries. It's already clarifying at the yeah. bottom here. So that Thank means that the, the, the magenta is going to show through. The magenta already has... Um, a thin coat of red over top of red glaze over top, but um, yeah, I just want to push it some more and see where it, where it goes. In the end, I might even reassert a magenta glaze to bring it tune it back to magenta. But the difference when you layer up different colored glazes is just fantastic, which is why uh, I teach topics like acrylic glazing because the the richness and depth of color you get with glazing can be absolutely fantastic. It's kind of like a lot of the colors you encounter in nature and the reason yeah. they're so beautiful is because they have they're not simple aspects colors. of like many different, maybe related colors. But, yeah. Um, yeah. You see a lot of special effects in nature, you know, whether it's transparency or iridescence, um, or sheen, you know, and and uh, as artists and as painters specifically, I think we need to learn from that. That you know, that's that's what makes nature so fascinating. Part of what makes it so fascinating and beautiful. Then um, we need to take that on board in our visual language. Lillian asks, you're painting on paper. How do you handle warping? Yeah, so this is an altered book. It's already got, you know, probably gesso and it's been glued together. So it has medium gluing it together. Right. It's How got many sheets paint. are glued together in that? Two uh, or three? Two or three. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, you know, it's already dealt with warping. And then, of course, um, Overnight, what I did, or for 24 hours, I put these pa plastic page protectors in between pages that had paint and stuff on them, and then pressed them with just a stack of books or a piece of plywood and jugs of vinegar, you know, whatever you have as a weight. Um, but they need the pressing to help flatten them. Now, when I say that, they're not going to get totally flat. That's just not the nature of this kind of thing. If you need things to, to be flat, then it means you need to be very, very constrained about what you do and how and with what materials. And I think that that's um, most often that's just creating a prison for yourself as a creative. It is better to embrace what happens with handmade objects and um, that that is the sign of a handmade versus a, a machine made object that you get irregularities and um, and unpredictabilities. Our world is inundated with machine made objects and as robotics take over more and more things, evidence of the handmade becomes more and more meaningful and important. So, of course, uh, you um, do things to keep it within certain limits, maybe, Unless you're an artist who doesn't, like there is a, an altered book artist who got 
pointed out to me by a student on YouTube named Lorianne oh, Jenkins. I think it's Lorianne Jenkins. It might be Lori Marie Jenkins. Uh, just just search on Google for for something like that and altered books and you'll find her. And anyway, she doesn't worry about it at all. Like she overstuffs her books like crazy. They're permanently fanned out just from the sheer magnitude of the content. And that's not my bag, but I totally embrace the fact that that's her bag. But it's like a gloriously over... Way over the top. Yeah, which but is great. Glorious, like, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Like, like a book that you probably can't even close. Oh, no, you can't. it's so packed with yeah. delicious craziness yeah, yeah it's yeah. it's completely nutty and that's it's one that's that's its strength right that it's and completely irregular and completely defies you know it it strains the um the physics of a book the engineering behind a book that's for sure lillian says love mixed media and yeah Ian asks do you press them with an iron you certainly could uh, that would be pretty laborious and the you'd need to use a, 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 a non-stick pressing sheet because um, uh, acrylic paint is uh, subject to heat as well as moisture. So the heat of the iron and certainly a steam iron would not be a good idea. It would need to be a dry iron. Um, yeah, it would soften the paint. Better. Weight is the traditional way to do it uh, because it is the... Uh, but there could be special instances where you'd want to press something so with an iron. So that's why I don't rule it out. Um, for example, I did some monoprints on book pages with um, watercolor crayons and that, but it was just uh, single thickness pages of the books and um, it caused the pages to crinkle up a lot. So, if you don't want things crinkling up a lot, one of the things is to prevent that by gluing pages together. Um, that's step number one. And uh, of course, if, if you get them too wet when you glue them, you can make them crinkle. But And then um, also to prime the surface with something so that it's less absorbent of the moisture. Was it Marianne Jenkins? It's not Marianne. It's Lori, Lorianne Jenkins or Lori Marie Jenkins. Lori is definitely the first. Looks like Cal's doing a search. Getting close here, on the second last row, I think, of these marks. It's a little bit fish scale like. Oh, I don't have enough paint on there. Squeeze some of it out. We'll put Lori Jenkins. That's what I've done, oh. Lori Jenkins artist, and I'm getting. No, altered books. Oh, okay. Don't look for just artists. Look for altered books. She's a specialist in art. I mean, she does do other things, but on YouTube, it's really about altered books. Okay. I think I'm getting Got her. Okay. I just need Laurie enough paint Marie. for the last. It is Marie. Laurie Marie. Jenkins. Yeah. I'll post it in a second. Great. Just Thank see you, if Cal. I can find her website. Well, just, uh, yeah, I guess. Okay. Okay, we're good. She has a website, but use the website as a way to get to her YouTube channel. She's, um, as my student Debbie says, she's a hoot. <laughs> Cal's just going to post the links. If I, or a link yeah. in the chat. 
in the modified form that will allow it to be in the chat. So you'll Hopefully, have to yes. replace dot, the word dot with an actual dot, period. Slashes too, so. Oh, really? I think the last time I did have. Well, don't include the HTTPS. No, just no, the, no, but there is a slash channel slash. Right. Slash, so. so, yeah, so you might need to replace the word slash with a slash. It's just uh, anti spam measures by YouTube. When you get a message, it's posting it now. You get to look up and just see whether it shows up in a minute. I will. I just have one more stroke to do. There. And the bottom is already mostly dry and therefore flattened out a bit. So if I wanted more texture, I'd need to use a, a gel, but. Um, That's not showing it to very good advantage. I think the problem is this light needs to be further back or something. Which one? This light. Can it back up? No? Okay. Well, what I could do is move the computer forward. Sorry, guys. It's just, you know, the mechanics here. I want the light to hit it the right way so you can see. The ridges. There, yeah, that's pretty good, isn't it? So, yeah, but that part's quite dry. So, um, yeah, we'll see how it turns out. The glossy part is wet. Um, the, the medium I used is semi-gloss, so it won't be that glossy. So I'll just set that up to dry. Yeah. Tinley has joined us. Oh, hi, Tinley. Glad you could make it. And he says, wow. And Lillian says, beautiful, drying very nice. Mia says, wow, love the colors and the brush strokes. And Marie Payne says, gorgeous. <laughs> and Annie, Bentley, Annie says, I need more supplies. LOL. <laughs> <laughs> don't we all? <laughs> uh, even when we don't need them, we need them. <laughs> That's great. Okay, so that feels good because I that's been waiting a bit and now I'm making some progress on it. So that progress always feels good to me. Just clearing away a random plate I found here. Okay, so I'm going to work on the little book now. Let's see what we've got. and says, I still have the many different mediums you showed us how to use in your classic helper. Oh, you need to use them. You need to dream up ways you can use them. Yeah. Well, you just saw me uh, uh, using a, one of the basic polymers. You could do that with uh, the gloss that you got. Um, you can do it with the matte too, and that would give you a frosted look as opposed to a clear look. Oh, I said I was going to read you this blackout poem. So uh, blackout poetry, you go searching through the words and find words. You have to keep reading and reading and reading and circling wor words or phrases until you find connections that make poetic sense. Ah, you bought extra. Yes. Good for you. Because it was a good deal, actually. Um, I was able to get good prices for the class. It's always my intention. Um, okay, so here's my blackout poem. Right here beside you for a moment, I held my breath, but I spoke more quietly filled with tears. The beginning, the end, 
sighed all of us. We can't cure your condition. Shining with tears, she isn't strong. That's the poem. Okay, I think this, actually maybe this page. I'm gonna have to buy you one of these, Cal. I'm borrowing Cal's silver, nice fat pen, which you, you saw last week if you were here, I think. <laughs> anyway, um, and uh, Seems like I like it a lot, and I'm using using it yet again. So, Amy says beautiful, and Mia says beautiful poem. Thank you for sharing. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Mia says again. I'm reading it again. I, I think that's what she means. Maybe at the end. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you, though. That's lovely. It's very satisfying using these pens, I must say. Uh, lovely coverage. This is the Liquitex brand, and I don't know if you know this, but the Liquitex paint pens, uh, they have the same, they have color matching between the paint pens and their paints, so that is awfully handy, obviously. Are they refillable, Cal? I believe. I've never done it, but I believe they are. Right. And so I think you can actually even buy like an empty an one. An empty one. And put your own. So you mixture. can put a mixed color. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that. Okay, I'm totally <laughs> into that now. Kinley, just noticed your shirt. Love it. Oh, thank you. Yes. Um, the poor thing, you know, it's eventually going to, it's got, already got a couple of holes in it. Um, so I got this lovely cubist skull from H&M. Um, they do some attractive things. And, uh, but I'm going to have to replace it with one of my own design. I'm going to do my own cubist skull or some kind of skull. Mia says, I want that pen. No cleaning of brushes. Seriously, right? Now, um, something you might want to know is the Posca, that's P is in Peter, O-S-C-A line of paint pens, has a brush tip as one tip option. So, you know, that opens up all kinds of possibilities, obviously. including when, you know, travel exists again, you could take a couple of your favorite colors. You have to put it in with your liquids, of course. They don't care that it's ink or paint or whatever. If it's a liquid, they want it in the liquids. I remember uh, packing for a trip a few years ago and and realizing, oh, like all my sketching pens and everything that have ink cartridges. The pen's fine if you take the ink cartridge out. Not really sure. Uh, it's kind of weird when I think about it, like Ballpoint pens are full of ink. That's kind of a grease. Is it? I think it's, well, it's not uh, very wet. unless. But it a, is a fluid. Yeah, yeah. Like it's not a brick, you know, it's not a brick of ink. No. There. Mia says, we'll check it with Kotex and Fosca pens. Thank you. Yeah. Um, the Liquitex pens are water-based acrylic, light, fast, and permanent. 
The Posca pens are designed to work well on, as well as paper and the ordinary run of materials, on non-absorbent surfaces. So they're supposed to work on like glass and plastic and so on, wood obviously. These would work on wood um, in theory. And uh, Molotov has a kind of paint pen called One for All, and it, it writes on all kinds of different yeah. things, including non-absorbent things like glass. And oh, so and on. I forgot to use my page protector. Yeah, Molotov is the creme de la creme of paint pens. So, got a couple of questions for you. Great. Right? Um, Lillian says, and don't call it paint, call it art supplies. I had trouble with customs because of toxicity. Oh, right. Um, good, good mention there, Lillian. And Mia asks, question, why do people love skull art? I think it, you know, it's something that unites us all and it's an icon. So it's fine if it doesn't resonate with you, but, um, it's just like um, any symbol. Like I have a simplified house symbol that a lot of people respond to because it's very evocative of certainly our ideas of home and what represents a home. Now, would it work in other parts of the world? Not necessarily. Whereas a skull will, because a skull is universal. There's that, I think it's in Peru, that ancient crystal skull. Um, and there are many, many, well, Damien Hirst, the contemporary British artist, did a skull covered in diamonds that he uh, offered for sale for, I think it was a hundred million dollars or something. <laughs> so it's literally a human skull covered in diamonds, um, you know, in a particular arrangement or whatever. And feel free to think whatever you like about it. it it's a genuine art project. Was it an art project that needed to happen? Um, but it does provide, it's sort of commentary. And, you know, the fact that it's on a skull is very important to the commentary aspect. You know, what is a human life worth? Here's a question we need to be asking right now, right? Um, the, the commodity versus intrinsic value, the intrinsic value of a human being versus the value that we've ascribed to commodities. One of the... Um, uh... I think the governor, like back in the 70s when the Kent State, I think, he, and I'm not sure it's that, but I think it the was. Kent State shootings? No, I think it was actually an, another black rally. And the, right. the governor said when the when the looting starts, the shooting starts. And it's like, oh, so it's property that is yeah, what? Yeah, property more important than human life, yeah. regardless of what you think about behavior. So the, the commentary about value, right? What do we place value on diamonds are perfect right so the diamonds there's one of those things that why does it have the value it does you know it's become attached to uh things like engagement rings and ooh, diamond jewelry and diamonds in crowns and tiaras and uh brooches and all that um, but that's a very interesting thing because who decided that was valuable as human beings, you know, going back to our most ancient roots, we're attracted to shiny objects <laughs> and things that glitter. Right. Yeah. And so that I remember as a kid loving the kind of icy formations on the snow banks. And I used to pretend that that was treasure because it had this sparkle and glitter. And uh, so it goes down to our real, you know, really early primitive selves. Whereas a skull, a skull is about our mortal lives, right? And so there's a whole um, uh, genre in art and in art history called memento mori, which is remember your mortality. And so, um, there are still life paintings that are packed as memento mori. It could be as simple as a, a bouquet of flowers that has wilted and dried out and decayed. Um, so remember that you're mortal. Um, so I think, you know, I think that 
I hope that at least gives you some insight into why the, the skull is a powerful signifier in, in art and, uh, you know, including pop art, popular art forms and um, fine art. I actually have a whole book of skull art um, that someone gave to me knowing that I loved uh, anatomical hearts. You know, there's another thing, right? A heart is a, a, a symbol of a whole lot of things that have to do with our cultural associations and our human associations with that thing. So, so a few uh, comments. Okay. Uh, Tin Lei says, I like skulls because in my previous job, I worked with skeletal remains. So for me, it has made me comfortable with death and everyone's different. Yeah, absolutely. You, I totally get it if you're not into it. So this is the mammoth book of skulls. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, there are those it, around the world, there are ossuaries, right? Often in Europe, there are often churches that got maybe during the Black Death, they got overwhelmed with bodies. And so they've actually completely decorated all the surfaces of the church with bones. Yeah, that was a little creepy. Making but... decorative designs like this decorative design, not necessarily this one, but you know, that idea of taking our remains. Um. Yeah, Tin Lei says, I have the same book, LOL. Love it. <laughs> and on a couple of other threads, he yeah. says, my husband offered me a $20,000 diamond. I chose a car, <laughs> LOL. I think you're smart, <laughs> yeah. right? Because the useful. diamond just sits there and you have to worry about yeah, it, right? Worry about it. Exactly. it doesn't do anything for you. You just have to worry about it. Um car does so much for you um, lillian says she travels with the msds sheets so that uh so that she can uh hold them out to show them that they're yeah strong. that's probably very wise and only travel with carry-on otherwise i put my art supplies in the other suitcase yeah it was a good page here somewhere i just want to well this isn't skulls, but this is a very interesting, these are interesting artworks. So. There is a, there are a skull. Right, but it's not yeah. just a skull, it's no, other bones. Other bones as well. Um, you know, and again, associating, so it's a fighter jet. So that's related to war. Um, we often go to war to protect our access to oil reserves. Um, usually disguised under something else, but in fact, it's strategic. So yeah, um, you know, there's just, gosh, I just hardly know what to show. Stella says, skull book looks amazing. It is amazing. There, some, some nice cozy knitting for you. <laughs> oh, and you think about the pirate flags, right? traditional pirate flags. Yeah, so this section on skull fashion, all kinds of tattoos. This one guy's got a whole body tattoo. And then um, street art. So that's like a storage, big storage tank somewhere. Anyway, um, just a little sampling. It's a wonderful book, beautifully made. Stella has clarified that uh, that it was a, a police chief in Florida who spoke those words during the original civil yeah, rights movement. Yeah, exactly. And that's why it was such a, an offensive yeah. thing to say. And um, Mia says, thank you for explaining. Obviously an interesting and powerful artistic symbol. Yeah. Mortality, unachievable nature of mortality. Love our discussions. Aw. Thanks for asking the question. It says go any D. <laughs> yeah. 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 You know, um, I may have sh I don't think I've shared this story here, but Cal and I, our first Christmas together, 
I knew he was the one when he gave me a circular saw as my Christmas present. <laughs> um, I had been uh, married to a, a lovely man who kept giving me pieces of gold jewelry. And, and don't get me wrong, I not like he wasn't making me drip in gold jewelry and I'm going, oh, poor me. Uh, you know, just he thought that that was the best kind of gift he could possibly give me, except that it wasn't. It was the best kind of gift the culture had told him he could give his woman. <laughs> and that's a big difference, right? Well, you, you liked statement jewelry. It could be $5 if it was beautifully statement designed. Statement jewelry right? made out of bottle caps. Yeah would have suited me better but than it, a gold but chain. But it was always very, and super fine, right? Like, yeah, like, completely the wrong tiny, scale yeah. for me. Because um, it was gold, so, you know, uh, it was very expensive. Again, that value thing, right? Um, Cal has often expressed his wish that we have stainless steel wedding rings, not gold ones. We've both managed to lose our wedding rings. I was the first. <laughs> So, you know, a diamond ring would really be wasted on me. Um, yeah, it's sad that we lost our wedding rings because we liked them. They were nice and simple and they matched. But, uh, hey. Anyway, it's, it's too funny. Power tools. I prefer tools as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's the thing, right? Like he, our very first Christmas together, he was perceptive enough to realize this was something of value to me. We come back to the discussion of value, right? I do value tools, materials, books that knowledge. that are repositories of knowledge or insight or wisdom or skills. Um, I value music. You know, that, so there are things that I value and those things are not things that the um, the commodities market considers value valuable. I guess that's the best way of putting it. All right. I have this. I have that. Oh. Hmm. I was thinking about the fact that this silver spread has dots on it. And <laughs> Couple of, uh, so got some good comments. Yep, Ooh. So, uh, Tinley says, I got a Dremel for Christmas and it was the best gift ever. Dremels <laughs> rock. Yes. And Mia says, diamond ring would be lost on, on me too. And you are the diamond. Aw, oh my God, <laughs> that's so sweet, thank he, you. He says, my ex never realized that about me, thus X, LOL. Yeah, you know, I think there's something really telling about that, right? And bless him, I mean, you know, I'm sure in case of your ex, so well-meaning and so unperceptive, you know? Um, just, just like we're missing each other <laughs> in a fundamental way. Um, which is very odd, but there you go. Not like I was keeping secrets, you know. <laughs> Dolita says, Zango's wedding ring costs 10 and mine about 100. <laughs> because it's a symbol, right? And to, again, to pour, you need to pour the right amount into the symbols for you. And for us, a we didn't need to pour mountains of money into our symbols because what it's symbolizing is what's yeah, I valuable think, to us. You know, as, as artists and designers, symbols are massively important, mm. but it is, they are signifiers. They are not Yeah, the they thing point itself, right? to something. Yeah, exactly. They're not, they're not, not the, the jewel thing. itself. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. And, and, and that's kind of... I mean, I've got books full of symbols. You know, we used to design logos. I, I, my first business before I even knew Cal, I designed lots of logos. That involved lots of symbols. So I value symbols 
and their importance and the role they play. But they are symbols. So, yeah. Wow, what a discussion today. You guys, you're an inspiring crowd, I must say. Seems to me like the next page needs a symbol. Yeah, well, I'm, the first thing I'm considering is because of the dots on this page, I don't want to perforate this page, the page that has this whatever it is, <laughs> that, that uh, featured element. So I wouldn't want to perforate through there, but I could perforate through this page. So if I perforate through this one, then it will be facing this. And so it'll come through this. So because there'll be holes, then I have to think what what should be on this side then? Um, this is a silver page two, which I think I should now just fill in with the pen. And then I'll unify them that way. So I can do that while I'm thinking about it. But I'm thinking, you know, I might put red onto that silver, glaze red onto it. Mm. So that I end up with a metallic red. Let's see, there's another use for um, Now, is that meant to glazing. symbolize blood for, for uh, mineral assets or something? You know, well, red over silver? <laughs> I think, you know, I make my art, I hope, in a way that allows you to apply your, your insights into... Um, for me, red is an important color to me. It's kind of a signature color for me. You rarely see me without red lipstick. Um, I generally, generally the first days of courses, I wear red because in Chinese culture, and I'm half Chinese, um, it is the color, it's an auspicious color. Brides traditionally wore it for that reason. And it's the color of happiness. So red has all sorts of symbolism. Of course, the, at, at its base, at its most basic level, red is blood. And that's why it has such important psychological power. And, and it's not always negative. It's often no. positive because blood is what keeps, you know, it's all blood, blood is life. our life blood, right? Yeah, yeah exactly. exactly. So, so. um Hence the red roses on Valentine's Day, right? There, got a nice silver now. It's passion, it's life, it's energy. Yeah. yeah. So Annie says we got our wedding bands at Di wedding bands at Diamonds R Us, Young and Dundas. LOL. Nice. And Stella says, love this discussion. You guys are great. Ah. Uh, well, you know, without you, this discussion doesn't happen. So good questions, good comments. So really appreciate you guys for that. Um, yeah, so I'm actually kind of excited about that. So I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do uh, is make a glaze using red ink, which is um, the lowest viscosity of the colored. It's colored. already well on the way to yeah, transparency. It's so, right? Yeah, it's so transparent and I'm going to have to check. I've got a few red inks, so I'm going to pull them out and contemplate them. Thank you, dear. <laughs> that is too funny, Kim. Fistful of ink. Yeah, then I've got my red inks. Um, these are acrylic inks, by the way. And, you know, some are FW, some are Amsterdam, some are Liquitex. So um, my recommendation buy something that's on sale that's uh i've been happy with all of these i think i got a, a set of amsterdam reds on sale and i've been quite happy with them i've used them in a number of things so what's that one that's scarlet High roll red. That might be. I love that red. That's so beautiful. 
It says Nap Fall Red Deep. That's a dandy one, but too deep, I think, for this. And Carmine. That's one of the Amsterdam colors, which is nice. Philippa says she That's was married beautiful. in a red suit given to her by her acupuncturist who's Chinese. Lucky red. That's so lovely. Given to you by her acupuncturist. What a what an honor. Wow. Uh, Mia says red flowers on a skull would make an interesting and symbolically interesting art. Inspired. Very. I don't know how many of you follow me on social media, but on Instagram and I think on my Facebook artist page as well, I posted a heart I did that incorporates blossoms, one of which is red. And, uh, and the heart itself is kind of a hybrid of flower and, heart, and anatomical heart. It also has a ghost of lungs very in the spirit of of uh, our times, let's just say, between pandemic and and so on. Talk about charged times, eh? Yeah, yeah. It you know, and it makes art and artists and artists making art so much more important for the sake of our individual mental health and, you know, as a way of processing things, even, even when this doesn't, what we're doing does not deal directly with the subject matter. Um, you know, just thinking about that, about blood and about memento mori, the skulls and about um, uh, lungs uh, and flowers. I don't know. It's just all like, you can be, it can be a way to help you process it without the work literally being about the things that are preying on your mind or preoccupying your mind, put it more neutrally. Okay, so I need to figure out what brush I'm going to use to spread that. Do you want it to be apparent or less so? Less so. I could use this one even. Yeah. Use my, I forget what kind of hair this is. It might be camel hair or it's quite fine and soft. It's really very nice actually. Just a cheap and cheerful brush, flat brush, but with these soft natural bristles. And I'll need a palette of some kind. You know what? Uh, I'm just going to get a yogurt lid container. Container lid. Okay. This is one time I can use one of the red ones. Hey, I've got a red lid with the red ink. And I'm going to add some medium to it as well. Which I should, no, I should add semi. Just to boost the transparency a little bit more. It stretches the ink. You know, ink uh, only comes in a couple of two or three sizes a bottle, none of them exactly huge. So, so Mia asked if those are Liquitex inks, and I've answered that the taller bottles are, and the squatter ones are FW, and that gold and is Amsterdam. High. Oh, Amsterdam. Oh, okay, yeah. I, didn't, oh, I didn't notice that. Okay. And Amsterdam is a little bit less expensive, is it, or is it? Well, I bought these on sale, right. and it was a really good price on sale. Right. Um, the, I know their paints are less expensive. We don't have in Canada that I'm aware of anything but their student-grade paints, but in Europe they have 
regular, you know, their equivalent to Liquitex uh, okay. line. Right. Um, so, wow. Yeah, so that, the only problem with this brush is that it drinks up the liquid really, really fast. <laughs> so I need a lot more than that. Oops, wrong medium. Okay, let's mix this together. Hopefully I'll have enough to actually spread some on the page. Be nice. I'll give it a go anyway. I need another page protector. I want to keep the facing page clear or clean. Hush has fallen over. There's a kind of hush to do, do all over the world tonight. Showing, showing how old we are there, Kim. Yeah. I was just in my mother's womb and I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> Karen Carpenter had an incredible voice. Okay, so I've applied it on the silver. We'll see how that goes. Hopefully it's transparent enough. Get the fan and help it dry. Nia says, love watching you paint. I keep collecting supplies and not creating much except sketching. I'm thinking I must be an art appreciator than more of a art appreciator than art maker. I think I intimidate myself. I think you psych yourself out. So, you know, um, one of the things I like about a, an altered book or a sketchbook, but maybe an altered book will feel less loaded than a sketchbook, is that, you know, what's the worst thing that can happen? Do you have to show it to anybody? Um, but I would suggest, you know, I'm using my altered books. I thought I was starting out with a theme at the beginning of this book and that I would maintain. I was so wrong. So this book has ended up becoming kind of a glorious laboratory. Would it help if you looked at a sketchbook or an altered book as a glorious laboratory? And then, you know, consider it your responsibility to test out the materials you've bought, the supplies and say, okay, what are some different things I can do that allow me to see what these materials can do? So it's not about you performing and making great works of art. It's about you experimenting and getting to know the tools and materials. I think that's really cr crucial anyway um, and can be particularly helpful if you're kind of psyching yourself out, talking yourself out of making, which uh, believe me at all levels of 
experience, including high level professional, it can and does happen. So it, uh, a former teacher of ours uh, told the story of a, a mid-career professional artist he knew who went to see Gerhard Richter's solo show at the Art Gallery of Ontario many years ago and um, showed the combination of his non-objective and his um, representational paintings. And the show blew this guy's mind so much that he got totally psyched out and didn't paint for two years. Because he just sort of talked himself out of, well, you know, I can't match that. But that, as we've learned, we're learning so well from social media, that's just comparisonitis talking. That's not, um, that's not a valid, it's not a valid thing to do. You, you are, you know, I'm never going to be Gerhard Richter. I'm never going to be Julie Mayretu. Um, I can admire and adore what they do, but I, you know, they're not me. I'm not them. So anyway, a blank page can tip also similarly be intimidating. So I have two suggestions for that. One is immediately make it not blank. I don't care what you do. Glue down a piece of newspaper with type on it. Uh, spill some paint on it. The, the, do you remember, um, so that we were doing a gallery walk a, a few years ago and... Um, Murray Laufer, who's a prominent and getting quite uh, up yeah, there, elderly, elderly yeah. now, uh, Canadian artist who, who taught for many years. He said, I used to go around in the life drawing and put a thumbprint on everyone's drawing before we started. And he said, there, it's not perfect. It's never going to be perfect. So just draw. Yeah. It's very, um, there's something about the perfection of a clean page. Also the perfection of, for example, if you buy a set of, a set of uh, pastels, right? And they're all laying out there pristine, all those glorious colors. And uh, it looks perfect. And of course, using them is going to make them imperfect, except that it's actually the opposite. What's perfect is a well-used set of pastels. Enjoy the pristineness and then enjoy mucking it up. Yeah. Maybe, um, you know, so another thing that can help is uh, put on your best music for giving you brash energy so that you can just go, what the hell, and go to it. There, there are a few strategies that we both used to sort of outrun that uh, interior critic that is so nasty in all of us. That's true. And Kim, Kim definitely uses music. She'll uh, put, either put her headphones on or crank up the stereo. And if that's going loudly enough, you can't hear that critic. And yeah. Speed is also a really good way to go about it. If you give yourself a, a very short time limit, okay, I have to create a, the drawing in five minutes or two minutes or 30 seconds. When the critic starts saying, you can't do anything in it, you just say, shut up. I don't have time to have this discussion. Exactly. I got to get this done. And uh, then you can get the, the energy rolling again too. So, I used to go to classes with, uh, this is years ago when it wasn't, uh, not a lot of people were, excuse me, going to classes with iPods and putting earphones in. But I had to in part because I'm somewhat ADD and the noise level of the other artists, even if they're relatively quiet, uh, just disturbed me. So the music would put them in the background. But if my inner critic was acting up, I'd put some serious uh, rock music on, high energy rock music, because um, that, that really worked. Uh, sometimes what can stump you is you're, you don't know what to start with. Like you have a whole bunch of, you love all these art supplies. They're all beautiful. They're all sitting there kind of scolding you for not using them or whatever. And 
you you agonize over what should I use? What should I do? Thinking you've got to pick just the right thing. And then when you've got picked what you're going to use, you've got to make something that's worth it. Those statements are the kiss of death. Start with anything. Honestly, it doesn't matter because you can switch midstream if you suddenly have clarity in a moment that, oh, you know what? I really want to be painting. I don't want to be drawing right now. Or I want to be collaging. Um, so that's not a valid reason to, to not just start lit literally randomly. Um, and then the other thing is it's not about making something that justifies your use of the materials, right? It's never about that. Never. So never, ever beat yourself up about that. If you place a high value on the materials, whether it's the paper, the tools, whatever, um, which I do, um, absolutely, um, you don't have to justify that. That is something your artist self needed, responded to, that is its own justification. Beyond that, that no justification necessary. So I hope that helps. I'm just, um, I'm digging into my, I have this, it's such a, a, a shambles, but it is my shoe box that has my paper punches and my rivets or grommets or whatever in it. And um, I'm just looking for what paper punch I probably... Not sure that this reaches far enough. And it's too big of, might be too big. I don't know, not, I'm not positive about that. Um, it's a smaller hole, but it won't reach far enough. So I think I have to go with this one. Or I have this one. Hmm. Well, that's an interesting conundrum. I might use the um, the Japanese screw punch because it can be used on any size surface because it doesn't uh, doesn't have to accommodate the paper. I'll get it out and I'll show you what this looks like. So, uh, Mia, thanks you for all of that. And also, um, question, brash energy music, any suggestions, anyone? So, um, High energy, so I, uh, it could be rock music. It could be really, if you're a classical music person, something um, that's symphonic and really big. Wagner right? comes to mind. Wagner, uh, you know, something big. Um, I, I know there are some, I can't name them. I know there's some Mozart that would do the jobs of Beethoven. Well, Beethoven's fifth might do it for you. Um, uh, anything that really kind of, Oh, uh, some of Eminem's yeah. music is really good for that. What's that song? The one I was playing the other day. Oh, the eight mile soundtrack is, yeah. is great. And I, and I, and of course I noticed we're picking the one white rapper, Yeah, so, <laughs> but, uh, but yes, uh, uh, we happen to love his music. Yeah. So I'm not going to, yeah, rap, rap is definitely, yeah. A, um, has it's brash and energetic for, if, if nothing yeah. else. Right. So, yeah. Uh, but for example, there, there you go. So um, if rock music does it, does it for you, even if it's not something you normally sit down and listen to, but you respond to the energy in the appropriate way, a lot of bands like U2 has their own channel on, on um, YouTube. 
and YouTube also has playlists. So that's a nice way to be able to access music that you, um, and Spotify, of course, you can, you can use the free version if you don't have the paid version um, and look up certain kinds of music. But I, um, so for example, on YouTube, I've been compiling for my own purposes, a uh, uh, music that almost compels me to dance. That is a great candidate because it's music that really fills your tanks and gives you your mojo and energizes you. And so that makes you feel strong and makes you feel brave. Um, so that's a possibility. Yeah. So, or, or, you know, some Led Zeppelin. <laughs> okay. So this comes with different tips. I just, I have to take my glasses off, of course, to see what I've got here. I think that might be a better size hole. Oh, there's that one. That might be good. Okay, so I'm going to change the tip. Yeah, someday I may write a little book on uh, getting past your creative blocks and because um, it's such a there there are many there are books out there already, but everybody, I think it's a case of we can benefit from everybody's helpful suggestions, right? Okay, so I need to map out what I want, for which I need a pencil. I'll do it on this side because it's flatter. And, hmm. So now I'm thinking about what sort of shape I might like to have. I had been thinking a rectangle, but mm -hmm. but I could harken back to this sort of diamond shape that I did here. Mm -hmm. Sounds interesting. So Mia says, love Rachman and I'm Stella. Definitely love dance music, Kimberly. Heavy metal, which is what I suggested. We'll give it a try. <laughs> <laughs> and then she said, just found a three-hour documentary on the story of high and high-energy music. Really? Yeah, now I, I'm going to Google that now myself. Seriously, that's, that's, that a, sounds, that's so interesting. Yeah. I, okay. love, uh, I love the way we lateral out and get such cool uh, yeah. leads to follow. Seriously, yeah. That's, that's the wonderful thing about a group, you know, um, Cal and I have spent most of our professional lives working in relative isolation. So, um, I start, I owned my first business when I was 21, 20 or 21. And, um, a design, my first design business, and um, for a few years. Then I worked at the company where we met, and then for a few years, and then we were partners in the next design firm for ages. And so we sort of ran our own show for a long, long time. And uh, But as I've gotten older, I've really realized the power, you know, there can be problems too, but the power of community and the power of, of working in groups, collaborating. And so that was one of the reasons why I joined the Redhead Gallery. I mean, joined. It sounds like I just walked in and joined. I had to apply to become a member. And thankfully, they thought well enough of my work and of me to, um, 
to accept my application. Um, but I'm learning all the time as a member of that gallery. Um, I, I respect all the artists in it as artists tremendously. I did before I joined. But I knew I would learn a lot from just that experience of, you know, we have to come, we vote on decisions, we try and build consensus, we collaborate on the various projects of the gallery. And that's, that's a really different experience for me and would be for Cal. He's not a member, but um, he did, he has shown there. So he's, he's, he's like a, almost an honorary member or, or a mascot even. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Now I can't see my marks. Isn't that, oh wait, I think I see them now. Okay. So just a quick look in high energy music, yep. NRG is like a, 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 it sounds like it's a dance kind of music that. Uh, oh, category, right. Category so it's a category. Happened. Yeah. yeah. A while ago. Okay. Um, well, that's but interesting it, it, too, yeah, right? No, I like, mean, I'll be interested to check it out. Yeah. Kinlay says she admits she enjoys death metal when creating. Yeah. Depending on her mood, of course, not always, with lots of fast drums. <laughs> right. Yeah, because it just, it gets you up for it, right? I understand that. Okay, what spacing am I going to have these at? That's a good question. I think I will make it go I make it go that far. Maybe not, maybe half an inch in. Sorry if I'm muttering. <laughs> I'd be doing that if I were alone. Uh, you know. Do I even know what I'm thinking unless I say it? <laughs> well, yes. But yes and no, you yeah. know? Okay. Three. Where's that thing again? Yeah, half inch intervals might be good. Okay, I'm gonna try that. Hopefully it will work out well, because <laughs> I can't exactly reverse it. Okay, I need some some protective cardboard barrier. Oops. I probably only need to do that, press it twice. Oh, I can't wait to show you the holes. <laughs> they look cool. Just have to make sure I know where that mark is. Yes, that's an amazing tool. It is an amazing tool. Did, we, did you ever get to your explanation of it? I know you were holding it I up. I held it up, but I, I think we, I think we were talking about something. something. Yeah, exactly. Well, how about when I... Um, Hold up this page, I then talk about the tool. Actually, I only need to press once. This blade is so good. I don't need to um, do the double pressing. So that's good. I can save the blade that way.
I haven't used this screw punch for a while. It is a fantastic tool. There, I can get the bits out that way. Okay, so where's my packaging for this? So the screw punch has a tip that has different, it comes with five different diameters of hole. And uh, just like a multi-head screwdriver, you just unscrew this knurled thing to put it in, um, change the tip. And this is the start. I'm going to do more. I'm going to do a diamond shape, a squared diamond. But there are my holes. And so when, when it's flipped this way, you see the through to the blue-green. When it's flipped this way, you can see that. Yeah, you see through to the red. Right? So that's kind of cool. And I think that's a nice answer to the tiny little dots on this spread. So um, that was my inspiration behind it. And it gives me a, a nice, because the, the structure of the book is more or less that I have an all over thing on the left and then a, a feature thing on the right, feature element. Uh, and so I think just the perforations themselves are going to be a functioning feature element. So uh, Mia says, amazing tool. So simple yet so effective. Yeah, yeah. I love a thing like that. It's very low tech, but very precision made with real brass and real wood and a very sharp blade. And when you press it down, does it rotate? Yeah, yeah it's called a screw. So... You see how it has this path that twists around? So when I press, there's something inside that pushes along that path and therefore causes this to rotate. So that means it's not just pressing like a punch. It's, it's twisting when it goes right. down, and, and that makes for a yeah. really good, clean yeah. cut. So I have asked people any other ideas for getting out of the overthinking slash self-criticism. Oh, group. good. Thank and, you. And... Um, I have a couple of good ones. So Annie says, look at some something one made years ago and see how much one has improved or evolved. And I think that's a really that's, great idea. I think idea. that's a great idea. Yeah. And Tinley says, since I'm fairly new to art, I just keep telling myself that I'm still learning and I, and I switch gears. I work on an older piece, take a break or experiment. Yeah. Every, th every session working on art doesn't have to be high performance, high productivity, you know, noodling around, um, making grounds, priming paper or canvas, um, drawing lines, playing with mark making. You know, there's so many things that can just be very low pressure but they get you using your hand, using your materials, and they get you in mentally into an art space. So I, I like that. I, you know, I, I suggesting it's absolutely true for art, but I think it's true of all human endeavors, and we just ignore it. The fact that there, there's only we only have a very finite amount of ability to be super high performance, and that sits on the shoulders of lots and lots of. Um, uh, time built as we move along, like as we do things that are sub-maximal, right? You yeah. know, and build and build and build. And then every once in a while you hit that like highest gear, but we, it's unreasonable to expect that we should ha use that high gear except very occasionally. So, yeah. yeah. When I'm preparing for a show, I go into an ultra high gear. So for my last show, uh, not the last one, that was the Gladstone, but the last one in 2019, which was my first redhead show, that was a big deal. And I was, you know, really wanting to make that debut count for something. And I had uh, 
a bunch of work already to do with the human heart. And, um, but I knew I wanted to make some new work. So I did. I made 43 new pieces <laughs> to that show, which sounds insane. And it is. Um, but, you know, one piece was a pile piece, right? So that's where some went. But uh, to do that required being in such a concentrated zone in the studio every day, really like exploring first. And then once I found my things that I wanted to do and they were quite diverse, so don't think I was you know, plowing ahead in one vein. Um, I had to be in a much higher gear than I could possibly sustain on a daily basis but I can do it for bursts. And I think, you know, there are a lot of um, creative collaboration things like filmmaking that are like that, where it's really intense for a limited period of time. And then people go home and collapse for a while, except for the director. The director has to be in the editing suite <laughs> and he has to keep going for years. Right. But, um, but other people can, can stop. Anyway, I, it can be addicting, I think, getting into that zone, but you know, you can't actually sustain it. So you need to um, force yourself if necessary to, to stop and take a break. I, I think it, yeah, it's so addictive because you hope that, and it's so wonderful that you have to recognize that it's a finite. Yeah. And not set up a false expectation yeah, exactly. that, oh, this is how I should be performing all the time, you know, because no way. You can't. It's not. Um... So uh, Mia says, yes, my mind gets hijacked by overthinking instead of just innocence of the process. Yeah. Yeah. Just allow rather than pushing. He says, love the human heart series. Can we uh, breathtaking? Thank you. I should just point out that we're coming up on 10 to 4. Are we really? Oh, my God. You guys, you've just uh, kept me completely, completely in the zone here. Hopefully it's done the same for you. I decided not to make it the square kind of diamond in this case. I'm making it slightly elongated. So, so far I have a cross. A cross, there's another signifier, right? Um, so yeah, that's what I've got now. But I'm going to fill those out. And that's what it looks like on the red side. So, um, I had someone requested that I read the poem one more time. So I thought what I could do is read the blackout poem one more time because possibly not everybody here heard that because I see the numbers are higher. And then I just have to find it. I'm sorry. <laughs> there we are. And then I'll do a, a flip through. Um, not everybody here was, was here for the first flip through, but now we've got some new stuff going on. So... <sighs> So this is the blackout poetry page where I edit out the words I don't want in my poem. It's, it's a form of found poetry. Right here beside you for a moment, I held my breath, but I spoke more quietly, filled with tears. The beginning, the end, sighed all of us. We can't cure your condition. Shining with tears, she isn't strong. Well, that's that. I may have misread that a little bit, but you know, there are new meanings to be found in every reading, right? So we'll flip through. I'll go closer so you can see that. 
that's new. Leads into this. Leads into this. Oh, I never even got to this today, so that will have to wait for another day. Because I'm going to do more layers on this shape. Trying to get it so you can see the little dots on the left page. There, now you can see them. Okay, that's good. Nothing on that one. That's that one. Mono prints of various kinds. Again, these are gel plate mono prints. They're not done, they're just at the beginning. And we'll end with this one. Brand new spread. Brand new image. In fact, is this the only non-abstract image in the whole book? <laughs> it might be. It might be. Well, you, it, oh, yeah. Let's get it. They have sort of some symbols. But not I have symbols, but I don't have representational yeah. images. Yeah, so that's the only representational image. And I'll just go close up on that because it's very rich mark making and texture. So he says, thank you both again for company information and inspiration. Next time I will go indoors. Ended up weeding instead of making art. <laughs> Have a great rest of the weekend. Love your poem, Kim. Oh, thank you. And Mia says, love the poem. Thank you, Kim, Lee, and Cal, and everyone here in this amazing blessings. Kinley says, that's beautiful. I poem. And Mia says, beautiful and inspiring. Well, you guys are inspiring. So thanks so much for coming today. Cal and I really appreciate you uh, taking, now that the warm weather's here, um, taking some time in your garden or inside to be with us. It's so appreciated. And I love the, um, wow, what a discussion today. Eh? So thank you for that. Well, he says, I love every page. Thank you for hosting again. Oh, thanks so much for coming. So um, be well, and I hope I'll see you next week. And next week, I will let you know, I'm going to be taking a little break from teaching, and I'll take a little break from the virtual studio parties. But I'll give you the dates for that. And I'll also post something on the YouTube channel. I'll post a short video that that shows when I'm coming back when I'm stopped, what the final one will be before the break and what the first one will be after the break so that you know, and you can always check if you forget, right? Uh, or haven't written it down. So, um, because these are, these are too good to give up. I just, uh, just gonna pause. And uh, until then, have a, have a good week, take good care of yourselves and uh, I'll see ya, bye-bye. seem to have any tape. Thank you.
Oh, I guess I could finish my diamond. That would be a good... said thanks to both of you what a great afternoon i love your book and your poem kim i need to try an altered book and stella says thank you and philip says i look forward to it I feel like family uh, mia says both of you please take lots of time to rest